guys. Yay! We got another Dutch oven cook. Now, I was going to do a main dish because everybody's wanting entrees, but then I got a bunch of requests for biscuits and breads and stuff like that. And since we're going to have these biscuits with our dinner tonight, I thought I'm just going to do it out on the Dutch oven or in the Dutch oven. So I've got my Dutch oven, and this is a 10 inch, uh, four quart. Um, you could probably do this in a smaller one or even um, uh, any size. Honestly, it doesn't matter if the bottom is filled up with biscuits or not. And these are kind of a drop biscuit. So I will go ahead for you guys. I know I don't leave recipes in the recipe box because a lot of my recipes can be changed. And so I want you to get creative and change them however you like. But this particular one, I will write down in the about section below because you want to follow it. It's delicious. So we're going to go ahead and get our Dutch oven started, but I'll give you the rundown of ingredients you're going to want to gather, and then we'll go out and get our coals started for this. And while those are heating up and getting ready, guys, we're going to have biscuits ready to go in the Dutch oven. That's how easy it is. And I don't ever preheat my Dutch ovens. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's necessary. The only time I would preheat it would be for cornbread, because I do believe that you should have a hot pan for cornbread to go in. So when I do cornbread for you, I'll show you how I do it. So what you're going to need is one and three quarter cups of flour. You're going to, it calls for a cup of cheddar cheese, but I really, um, I always add a little bit extra. So cup to a cup and a half of cheddar cheese, <clears throat> and I'm going to list it as a cup. In this container, I have a half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of granulated garlic, about a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of uh, baking soda, and half a teaspoon of baking powder, and then you need a teaspoon of cream of tartar. In this bowl, I have one beaten egg, a half a cup of milk, and a half a, or a quarter of a cup of milk, excuse me, and a half a cup of sour cream. And you beat that all together, it's kind of a thick, yeah, yeah. And we have diced jalapenos. Now, you could use green chilies if you have wimp in it. So as I was saying, if you are sensitive to hot things, go ahead and use gr mild green chilies. Um, you can actually add a little sweet red pepper in there. It, it really is your, it's your option to change it however you want. But for the basis of the recipe, you're going to need some kind of chili, or it's not a, a cheddar chili kind of a biscuit. And um, so let's go get our coals on. I'm going to do uh, 10 coals for the bottom and 12 to 14. So I'm going to do um, 14 coals for the top. And that's only going to cook like uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And you're going to smell it and it's going to be delicious. So you guys that started getting your Dutch ovens out and getting them cleaned up, get ready because we're going to do the, uh, well, this isn't the first one, but we're going to do another Dutch oven cook and it's beautiful weather outside. So um, I'm going to go out there and I'll take you out and show you how I do it. I know a lot of you asked. So, all right, guys, let's go. So guys, you're going to need to get yourself a chimney for your charcoal. It just makes it easier. No chemicals. Um, I've got the trivet for the Dutch oven to sit on already placed, and I'm going to go ahead and place the chimney on top with the paper inside, and we'll count out our coals. Perfect. Okay, so now I've got the coals, and I use um, a rubber glove just to keep my hands a little cleaner, and we're going to go ahead and start this up. Get it started. And now when these coals turn red, just like when you're barbecuing, when you're ready, then we will put them on the Dutch oven and we'll be ready to go. So let's go back inside. This is gonna be back and forth, back and forth. Let's go back inside and uh, get our biscuits made. Oh, it's going to be delicious. And that's about a half of a chimney full because this is a large chimney. So, all right, guys, I'll meet you in the okay, house. Okay, so butter, flour, and it's asking you to go ahead and put half of your cheese in and cut that. So I'm going to leave it. And then all of the baking soda, baking powder, 
And we're gonna cut this, oh, it smells wonderful already. Cut this all together. So you wanna butter the bottom of your Dutch oven pretty generously. And then it's on. I'm just so excited about this. You guys are gonna love this recipe. Trust me. Okay. And I get up the sides a little too because you probably are gonna get some on there. And then once you've got that cut in, go ahead and add your jalapenos. And this is a, and I will put it in the about section, a four ounce uh, can. And I drain them. So you drain the jalapenos, diced, and add your egg and milk and sour cream. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, that's some fat right there. I guess it has got almost the same. And you're gonna get this. And these end up, if, you ha if they end up too dry, you can always add a little bit more milk to it. Um, I've used buttermilk in the past, but you don't have to. These are kind of a um, doughy, wet biscuit dough because they're dropped. This is perfect. You don't need to add anything. So you want kind of, if you've ever made Bisquick biscuits or dumplings, you want it that consistency. It's a very thick, batter, sticky dough. And I am going to get the dough off of this. Go ahead and super excited. And we're gonna drop spoonfuls or forkfuls, however you wanna look at it. And I left the microphone set up outside so you could hear me out there. Uh, so it's a little bit different in here, but you're gonna go ahead and drop these in. And if you wanna shape them, you can shape them up. Um, and depending, I think I want that, that amount. So you really want a pretty good amount. Think of, you know, how big of a biscuit do you want? And because this is going to be for, um, you know, like a, a bread for our dinner, they don't need to be huge. Now, if I was making them for breast, breakfast biscuits to put a fried egg on, I would make them pretty big. But this is a perfect amount for a 10 ounce or 10 inch cast iron pan. Ooh, that's gonna be good. My husband is gonna be so excited when he sees these on his plate. Okay, enough for two more, and the bottom of my pan is full. Which is just perfect. And I am gonna have this uh, Dutch oven up above the coals. Um, you wanna create that 350 degree oven effect. So I don't need it right down on top of them. Um, they cook pretty quickly, so be ready to smell. So here's, I don't know if you guys can see this, but that's what it looks like in the pan. So we are ready to put our cheese on. So you're gonna top the remaining cheese over the top, and you want sharp cheddar for this, um, and you want to grate it yourself. <laughs> Don't take the shortcut, because it's not as good. It doesn't melt as good, It's not. it doesn't have the sharp flavor, and I think they add wood pulp to keep it separated, but that's this is easy, it takes five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna clean up. As soon as the coals are ready, we're gonna put this out on the uh, coals and I'll put the coals underneath and get them ready to go on top for you. And uh, yum, that's how easy it is. All right guys, I'll meet you. Okay, coals are ready. I'm gonna dump all of them out. And they might be overdone. And we're gonna put some of them on the top here And you, you usually want more on the top than on the bottom, and that's because the biscuits are down here. There's more air space. So, get those out. 
And you're gonna go, oh, it doesn't look like there's enough. But trust and then we're me, you put it in the oven, and it's already radiating heat big time. So, and that's, remember we want 10, uh, 10 to 12 on the bottom and 12 to 14 on the top. So we go three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. I'm gonna put one more there, and we are ready. And over the coals it goes. And literally, I could have used that um, lid lifter to move that because it was actually hot. Um, on my hand already. This heats up extremely fast, guys. So um, pretend that's your 350 degree oven and we're gonna give this 20 minutes and we'll be back to see what we got and uh, I can't wait to show you because it's gonna be delicious. And then we'll take it in the house and let it cool down and rest enough to get them out of the All Dutch right, guys, oven. So <laughs> I'm in with the Dutch oven, it's still screaming hot. It took 25 minutes, but it's gonna vary depending on how many or how much of your coals are left when you put it on and under, if that makes sense. And you wanna make sure you have plenty of these. These I bought years ago. This is a, a trivet for the Dutch ovens, and these are pretty heavy duty. The ones you buy now aren't so much. So um, I'll post a link to some of these. You're gonna need a couple. I, I, I've got one on the bottom. I need to put my lid on something. I can't set it on my table. And you're gonna need a lifter. So here we go, the big reveal. Oh, look at that. And how I knew it was done when I went outside, I could smell them. I could smell these biscuits and they absolutely smell fantastic. Now let me get you off the tripod and bring you in for a close up. You're, you're not look gonna believe those it. those babies. Oh my goodness, oh, oh, Lord have mercy. This is gonna be fantastic. I think you should be in for a extreme close up so we know what they look like on the inside. Okay guys, mm -hmm. I know these are really, really hot. And the nice thing about the cast iron is, my husband's not home from work yet, but I can leave these sitting here and they are gonna stay warm until he gets home. So I need a little bit of, uh, need a little bit of a pot holder here and your cheese might stick and these are going to be biscuits that you just kind of cut into sections because they kind of meld together in the cooking process. Uh, once they've cooled too, it's a little easier to get them out of the pan. But, ooh, look at that. Let me see. Oh, the bottom is perfect. Look, oh my gosh. You guys, look at that. It's beautiful. It's a tender golden brown on the bottom. Absolutely perfect. I'm so excited. I, I need a bite right now. Actually, my bite I think fell off in the pan, so I'm gonna go ahead and I can smell the green chilies. It just smells amazing. I wish it wasn't so lava hot. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna give it a, I'm giving it a go for all of you. Mm. Tender, moist, oh my gosh. A little bit of heat, the cumin comes through. Mmm, that's delicious. I hope you guys try these. They're absolutely wonderful, honestly. These are one of my favorites to have. As a little side, you know, it's not your traditional big cat head biscuit, um, but they're absolutely really tender and moist on the inside because of the milk and the egg and, mm. So good. <laughs> mm. So again, I hope you get a chance to try them. For those of you that are doing the Dutch oven cooking with me, let me know what you're cooking first. I'm gonna put my lid back on so these can stay warm and they'll be nice and warm for dinner. And I do dump the coals off before I bring it in the house. It just makes it easier. But 
Uh, these would be awesome next to a uh, potato soup or some kind of soup in the winter time. Have this delicious um, biscuit that you made in the Dutch oven. And look, if I pull that apart, oh my gosh. It's just beautiful crumb with all the cheese running through it. So again, oh, I can't wait to see you next time. Let all of us know what you're doing. So guys, and I hope it inspires you to go ahead and jump in and start cooking with your Dutch oven. What's the worst thing that can happen? You make something delicious? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's pretty fantastic. And uh, I've got a whole lineup of videos all planned out for you while I was camping and, and vacationing. I really decided I was gonna bring you a really nice playlist of stuff like this so you guys can learn how to do them. Take very little fuel, honestly, you know, 24 briquettes. Cook this, and I could have cooked a side or even a dessert or a, a quick main dish with the leftover briquettes. So you can really stretch those briquettes a long ways. So I'll see you next time on the next Dutch Oven Cook. Hmm.